viewer wanted to see how I would perform animated typing text using JavaScript for an HTML page scenario without using Flash. This raw custom JavaScript function we created to mimic the Flash ActionScript 3.0 animated typing text tutorial is very similar in structure, syntax, and logic. Programming is becoming more and more universal throughout all technologies, and it is very nice to see that some common relationships exist that we can adapt from one technology to the next. Okay, so here is the Flash tutorial that we're going to be working against that I just put out on YouTube yesterday, and you can click here to see it now if you want and the user and the person on YouTube that requested to see this in JavaScript is Winfreak and what they stated was do you think you could show us on how to do this using Ajax or jQuery and I think he just meant using JavaScript because you don't need Ajax and you don't need jQuery I mean you could use Ajax and jQuery but it's almost overkill for this because jQuery, all jQuery is, is just raw JavaScript. So I'm going to show you using raw JavaScript how to produce the typing text animation. That way you won't have to implement jQuery if you're not using it already. So, but if you're using jQuery already and you want to do something like this using jQuery, feel free. But it's really overkill and you don't need to use jQuery because all jQuery is is JavaScript. And I'm going to show you the JavaScript method. And what Ajax is, is just a way to call external data from the server into your scripts. So if you want to have all of this data come typing in, maybe come out of a MySQL database or something like that, then you would implement Ajax. But otherwise, you don't need Ajax. And you really don't need jQuery. We're just going to use raw JavaScript. And you guys are going to see some really striking similarities between JavaScript and ActionScript 3.0. I'm going to bridge the gap between the two from a logic standpoint. Okay, first thing we'll do is create a new HTML page and I'm going to get rid of all of this. So we have our HTML tag open and closes. Within it, there's the head tag and the body tag. In the body tag, I'm going to place a new div with an ID equal to my typing text. I'm just going to close that div. Now underneath this div in the body tag, I'm going to put in a script tag. Because if I'm going to use JavaScript here, this is where I want to apply it for this kind of scenario. So you can kind of think of this div as our text field that we had in Flash. Remember that TF text field that we had on stage, dynamic text field? You can think of this div as that text field. It's just going to be the container where we're throwing text into. We're going to animate text into that container using JavaScript. So let's open the script tag and let's close the script tag off now inside of it we can place JavaScript now let's look at the flash the first thing we create was a variable called my string so let's do the same thing in JavaScript var my string is equal to place your string data here and as much as you like alright so back in our flash application we have a string in ActionScript and we set a string in our JavaScript now. Now what we did was we created an array out of that string being split. So we use split on that string and it becomes an array at that point holding each character because we split it by the character. So let's go into the JavaScript. The next line down, bar my array is equal to my string dot split. It's pretty much the same code almost. So now in JavaScript, you've taken that string and you've busted it down into an array holding each one of these characters within this string. So the first element in the array is a capital P. Second element is the L and so on and so forth in this array. Now in this next line down, we're going to create a timer or initialize a variable for a timer that we will create. Because in the Flash ActionScript 3 file, we're using an enter frame event function which is a way to loop, make something happen many, many times over a time period. It's the same thing we're going to do in JavaScript, but we can't use an enter frame event in JavaScript because JavaScript just doesn't have a, an enter frame event, but it has a similar type thing to let you do the same type of thing. But you can do it in a browser on an HTML page, animate things any kind of way you want, just like you can in ActionScript. So here we're going to type in a function called frame looper. 
make sure we close that function nest. So here we have a function nest set up called frame looper. Now within that frame looper function, we want to have a set timeout function running, which is your mechanism to have pretty much like your enter frame event in Flash. This will make it loop. Your set timeout function will make it loop because we're because within this set timeout function, we're giving it two parameters. The first parameters be being the name of this frame looper function. The second parameter is the time interval. So if you wanted to to type slower, you make this number bigger. If you wanted to type faster, you make this number smaller. Now the reason why frame looper function and there's some kind of crazy monkey outside my door. So actually that variable we initialized here, let's call it loop timer there. So within frame looper, this is basically how you make an enter frame event in JavaScript. Now I haven't executed any code within this function yet, but now this function is set up to loop on itself using a time interval here that I establish. Now watch how similar this is. You're going to bug out. All right, you see this if else condition statement I just popped in there? It's a very similar to this if else condition statement here in Flash. Remember in Flash we said if my array dot length is greater than zero, if and only then do we shift the array to pop off whatever's in the in the front of the array one by one. Else we don't do anything because once the array length gets down to zero, we don't want to shift anymore because we'll get errors, and we want to make sure we remove the event listener, which is the looping mechanism. Same thing in JavaScript, man. If my array dot length is greater than zero, then you use document dot get element by ID to target my typing text div, and you use the inner HTML property to place a value into that div and you use plus equal to append to it. If you have just an equal sign there, you'll just get one character at a time overriding whatever character was placed in before. You put plus equal, it will append. And see here, my array dot shift. It's the same thing we're doing in the Flash. So if you saw that Flash tutorial, you know we're doing the exact same thing and using almost the exact same code. Look at that, my array dot shift. JavaScript, my array dot shift. And we're doing the same kind of mechanism with the if and else condition, condition statement here. If my array dot length is greater than zero, then and only then do we pop off the leading element in the array and place it into that div using my array dot shift. Else, if the array length gets to zero and there's no more items in your array, everything has been printed, then you want to use clear timeout instead of removing the event listener in flash you clear timeout, which is this loop timer, and you put that in the parameter for that function. You put loop timer in the parameter for that clear timeout function. That removes the set timeout. That way things won't bog down your page unnecessarily when things are finished typing. And that's it. Look how lean that is. That's pretty lean. So let's save this file. File save as. Put it on my desktop, call it test. Save. Okay, so now before your script tag closes, all you have to do is type in frame looper. And all this does is it initiates or it makes this function frame looper start up for the first time. It's almost like starting the engine for it. This line right here will make sure that this function starts up. Once it does start up, it uses set timeout to loop on itself to animate things. That simple, just like we did in Action Script 3. Control S to save it, press F12 and see what we have. And you can see it's typing there really nice. Now, what you can do is I have some CSS here that I'm going to pop in for you. Just as an example, in the head section, you see how this div that we have, we're putting text into magically, is called ID My Typing Text. You can use that ID in your CSS here. I'm going to put it right here on line three. You ready? Boom. So here's your style for that, my typing text. You can style it any way you want using CSS. If you know CSS, you can go crazy with it. If you don't know CSS, you better get to learning it. Now let's press F12. There you go. It can be a box as big as you like. The color of the text can be any color you want, as big as you want, any font you want, whatever. 
and that's all HTML and CSS. We're using JavaScript for the animation. And that's it. There's not much to it. And I'll have this script available at develop PHP. At develop PHP, I have a learn JavaScript section where, and let's see, I have also a JavaScript video tutorial section. That's where I'm going to put this code. So this video tutorial you're watching right now is going to wind up right here in this list. And the script that you see me produce here is going to be on the page with that video tutorial. So you can get at the code if you like. So I'll see you later, man.